What's up, everybody? Nintendo. Welcome back to a link between worlds. That was some intro, huh? It's Sante. Milk bar, yeah. Love the owner of the milk bar, baby. Uh, uh, uh. So good, man. I'm telling you this game. So in the last episode, we had a nice little interlude where we listened to some music. In this episode, we're gonna pick up more rupees on our way to the Eastern Palace. Once again, throwing back to A Link to the Past here, where our first dungeon is... Wait. Okay. Apparently, we're not in Kansas anymore, Toto. Whatever. Huh. Could it be a future boss? Somebody spying on us? I don't know, man. Makes me a little uncomfy. So you might notice Octorox actually take two hits to kill in this game. Uh, instead of one. Which is a mite bit annoying, but not too bad. Okay, thanks for that lack of two. What the hell am I supposed to do now? Well, you might notice these signs over here bear a strange resemblance to someone we've seen before. And I just killed the sign. Oh, really? But, dude, you're staying with me and now you're putting up ads for people to come to my house? It's not cool, man. Not cool. Stay away from the birds. Alright, I guess we better go see what's going on. What's he got going on up there? Ooh, Rupee. Never pass up Rupees in this game if you can help it, especially if they're fives. Fives are better. I mean, I could see leaving a single behind. You know, like, if you saw a dollar on the ground, you'd probably just be like, yeah, yeah. who cares, you know? But when you see five dollars on the ground, it's like... Doo -doo 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 -doo. Exactly. You know, you tell him. You tell him, Rooster. Uh, I don't want to take a break. Let's take a break. So what do we got here? What's with the signs, dude? So you definitely have. What? Yeah, Link is like, what are you doing, man? I'm not running a business here. This is where I sleep, man. Yep. Sure did. Well, do you remember what the symbol was? Yeah, it was this right here. That's right. It was. Ugh. Does it remind you of anything? Like maybe this? Oh, you've been holding out on me, have you? You rented the bow. Notice how it has like Ravio's little hat on the top of it. Normally I charge you a rental fee, but I'll lend it to you for free this time, anyway. But I'll be taking that back if anything happens to you out there. Huh, so get used to this. It's items work in this game a little differently than what you're used to. Aha! This is the energy gauge. It depletes when you use Ravio's items and recharges over time. If your energy runs out, you can't use Ravio's items till it replenishes. Try it out! <laughs> Dude, no, 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 I didn't want to... I didn't want to hear it again, owl. Jeez, que pobre gay bora. Rupee, rupee, rupee. I'll spare the bluebird this time. So. Yeah, so in this game, um, when you use items, it's a little different than before, because like in before, the past Zelda games, you pick up arrows as items, and you had like a limited, you know, storage capacity and all that. Well, in this game, basically, you have limitless arrows, but you can only use so many within a given amount of time. And notice how each time I use one, my little bar in the lower left corner decreases. 
and then gradually like recharges. So that's pretty much how it works. I can shoot like four arrows right away, but then I have to wait for it to recharge. Otherwise, I could spread my arrow shots out and then not have to worry about it as much. But, <clears throat> but you know, it's like it is what it is. Wait a minute. This used to be Sahasrova's place, and now it's uh, it's not. <laughs> Well, that's good, because I didn't want to listen to all that dialogue anyway. I mean, I'm sure you weren't looking forward to it. See, they changed this place around a little bit, too. You can bomb the wall there. But then, of course. So there's like a whole... I mean, it's pretty easy to get lost in here now. If you jump off of here, you're pretty much going to be screwed, because what you want to do is come up here. And this is the only way to get to the palace. No other way up here. And of course it's tempting, you know, to jump off the side and go for treasure chests, but I elected not to because we can always do that later. Besides some of them you need to actually use a certain power that we don't have yet. So. Oh, my apologies. I thought you were looking... Um, no, someone I'm looking for. Aren't you Link? You're the blacksmith's apprentice, right? What brings you all the way out here? What, 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 what? Vile dudes at the sanctuary? My master sent you to fetch me back to safety? Huh. This Yuga you speak of, surely he's cause for great concern. But why should Zahasrila be worried about me? I'm a descendant of the original Seven Sages! You know, I've got Pan's sword on the pan now! Oh, you got yourself a sand rod. What are you going to do with a sand rod in a place like this? Good lord. I'd love to know. I've never actually come back here with a sand rod. Maybe that would be something worth doing. Maybe there's like a plot of sand that you never notice when you come through this dungeon for the first time. And like you would only notice it later when you had been trained to to seek them out, because you had the item with you. Which, spoiler, is eventually that is an item that you get. But then it's kind of obvious, I guess. Ugh, can we move this? We can't grab these? Dang, I totally thought that you could. Can't seem to open any of these doors. Wah! There's a switch here, though. Well, that helps. Some rupees. A statue here that we can't move. So we're in the first dungeon now. Just uh, taking our sweet time here. Pretty simple puzzle so far. Nope. And in some ways, this will resemble the first dungeon of the first game, The Link to the Past. But they've done a little bit of upgrading over the years. Who's been doing said upgrading? I don't know. Maybe just the baddies themselves. I don't know. I never pictured them as being that resourceful. I don't picture one of those tentacle guys as being able to carry a, a brick around or something like that. Hmm. Oh, dear me. Coming to life over here. See? Like, this guy couldn't carry a brick. Well, maybe he could, I don't know. But then, like, would he be able to, I don't know, to actually lay a brick down and pour concrete over it or whatever? I don't know. There's a little hidden fairy down here and some doopies. Some doopies. We don't really need any fairies because we got a good old-fashioned milk. And milk is greater than fairies. And if you look really close here, you can see two switches. One right here, and one right here. If you do those with perfect timing, you get a small key. Very simple. We could use that to open this door. Or we could go exploring a little further. Oh my gosh, three of them! What am I gonna do? 
four of them. No! Okay. Well, that wasn't so bad. <laughs> Good lord, man. I'm trying to scare my ass. Let's work our way around to that treasure chest there and see what's inside. Oh, I can't wait. I can't wait. It's the compass. Yay. Now you might notice I already have a map of the dungeons. It's like, well, wait a minute. Are there just no maps in this game? Well, actually, no. There are no maps in this game. Why is there... Hold on, let me check something out here. Aha! That's what I thought. Yeah, so no dungeon maps in this game. All you get is the compass. And it'll tell you where all the treasures are, as per usual. But it's one less thing you have to look for in the dungeon, and rightfully so. Because they've made room for, uh... Oh, jeez. Fell for that, didn't I? Because the treasures you get in the dungeons in this game are a little more unpredictable than what we're used to in Zelda games. Like, in most Zelda games, there's a treasure, you get it, and then you use it, you know, to get through the dungeon and all that shit. And it's just so predictable and everything. But in this game, just about every dungeon, it's like, you don't know what you're gonna get. And most of the time, what you get doesn't really have anything to do with the dungeon. It's just an item that you're gonna use, you know, over time. Sort of like the Blue Mail or the Highland Shield. I mean, those are treasures of dungeons now. Rather than being something you have to save up for. And holy shit! Didn't see that coming. We don't actually have a shield right now. Oops. There's a switch over there. We're gonna need to hit that switch. We're just gonna have to time this out really well. Here we go. These diagonal balls are really weird. I'm not used to this. You got some monster guts! Ugh. Looks like a combination of a heart and a stomach punch. Holy crap. Dun, 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 dun. So, let's move right along here. Feels kind of like we're circling back around in the beginning here, though. But actually, if you look at the map, it kind of is what we're doing. Hmm. How many of these puzzles can we solve right now? Hmm, not that one. Get these two things. There we go. Access to the upper level. What? Apparently we're not on the same level as that. Probably good that we're not, because if we could reach it, there would have been problems. Now you can actually hit this one, boom, like that. That makes this a little easier. And then from here, hit this one. There we go. It's the first dungeon, what do you expect? It's supposed to be easy. So... Let's get a little target practice here. Oh, that was terrible. Let me fix that up, there we go. And boom. Not a problem. Get some more rubies here. What do we have here? Another small key, of course. <laughs> Like, that's probably where they would have originally put the map or something, I don't know. So, the funny, I mean, in Link to the Past, they always had, like, the treasure chest that had, like, the map or the compass or whatever. It would always be sitting in, like, an epic spot. But, you know, when you see treasure chests in this game, it's kind of like, well... A lot of them sit in epic spots, so you really never know what you're gonna get. Here. This again, really? Holy crap, there's one up there. See you later. Oops. Well, they're just as annoying as they were in the first game. Fortunately, with arrows, they can be dispatched rather quickly. Or if you just want to spin attack, we can do that too. Works pretty well. We got ourselves a big chest. 
One other difference between this game and A Link to the Past, you don't need a big key to open a big chest. You open the big chest and you get the big key. This is a nice little trade-off there. Makes things a little bit less complicated. So we check our map down here and see we got something here. Oh, there we go. Let's make that accessible. That makes sense. Makes sense! Let's see, we got one more room unexplored over there. Let's see if we can find a way to get to that. Looks like we get it from here. Oh. Sometimes you see a room and you think, well, there's no need for me to go into that room. Because I've already finished the dungeon. But then suddenly you realize there's like one last little thing that you didn't do or something. Shazam! <laughs> That's cool. I think to get to that room we actually need to go back. Oops. To do a little backtracking here. Normally backtracking is not a huge deal. And it's especially not a huge deal in this game because... Well, because it's fun, you know? Oh, jeez. Probably should have uh, saved up and bought myself a shield before I came here, but uh, didn't do that. A shield, you can block these arrows, obviously. <laughs> but then I guess you probably do that already. Uh, did we get it down here? Whoop! There's another one, jeez. And they got treasures like gangbusters here. Make our way over to that. So, oh, wait, 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 wait. I'm not falling for that. There is a hair hanging in my eye and it's driving me crazy. Thank you. Okay, I guess you're just not gonna shoot. More monster guts. Oh, good timing, dude. You know what? That's okay. We got a heart right over there. Another nice thing about this game is you can pick up rupees by just hitting them with your sword. Which is something you could also do in A Link to the Past, but sadly not in a lot of the other games. Which is unfortunate. So this is the end of the dungeon. We got the big key. Everything's good. Should we fight the boss? I don't know. I mean... Uh, <laughs> no, I think I'm going to cliffhang it because, you know what? It's, I'm an evil bastard. So yeah. See you guys next time. Aw, uh, let's play A Link to the Past. Or, I mean, A Link Between Worlds, my bad.